It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to do a tool called web map. So this is basically a, a nice uh, web based UI front end for in map. And I've done a few videos in the past on in map so I'll, I'll, I'll link those down in the description and in the show notes. Uh, but this one just gives you a really nice overview of what's going on in your network whenever you use nmap to basically get the XML file output. This just puts it into a really nice way to view it. Uh, it runs in Docker, so it's really easy to set up. And I'll kind of go through that with you here in just a minute. Uh, first, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you to the subscribers at YouTube. You guys just really make it worth it for me to keep doing these videos. And I appreciate all the comments and all of the questions that I get and people really being excited about these different projects that I show you. I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you get a lot out of them. And if you do, make sure to subscribe, hit the little thumbs up, and hit the little notification bell so you'll know when I put out new videos. Again, I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. Now let's get into this install. So this page is really great actually. I'm going to link this GitHub page for you. And if you scroll past the screenshots here a little bit, you're going to see that there is this uh, usage section. And he gives you everything you need. So we're going to just go through this here real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to do a make directory dash p. And I'll do it in the same location that, that he says to do it. It doesn't really matter. You can do it anywhere, honestly. Um, but we'll make it as a temp directory. Uh, so that one's made. And then we're going to go back and we're going to grab this uh, command here, the docker run command. And we're going to copy that with control C. There we go. So we're going to paste this one time. Um, and then I am going to control C out of it. So when you paste with these little uh, line breaks here, the problem is you can't go back up. No, no, nothing that I know of lets you go back up to those lines above to make changes, which is something that we normally want to do and in this case uh, I don't think I need to do it. I don't think I have anything running on port 8000 but I want to talk about the command itself. So I'm just going to control C out real quick. I'm going to hit up and that will give us everything we need except for that last bit and we can type that in which is reborn tc slash web map. So that's the actual image that we want to use. Uh, we have a volume that we map right here and this is the volume <coughs> that we set up while ago. We've got a port that we're mapping from the host to the client. Um, and then we've got the uh, host, which is kind of a host entry, I believe, the dash H. And then we've got the name of the actual entry that it'll show in Docker. So we have Docker run dash D, which is run it as a daemon when everything's complete. And then name it web map, so it's easy for us to find in the list of our, of our Docker containers. Uh, the host itself is going to be the web map host. And then... We're going to forward port 8000 on the on the host side to 8000 on the container side. So it's always left side host, right side container. And then we're going to uh, also map the volume slash temp slash web map, which we just made a while ago. And we're going to, we're going to map that to the container uh, location of slash opt slash XML, which is fine. And then this is the actual name of the image uh, that we want to go grab and create the container from. So this is a pretty simple command. Now, if, if you have port 8000 already in use on your host, you want to change this left side to something else. I don't believe I have 8000 in use yet uh, on my host, so we'll just leave it. If, it. if it gives me a warning, then we'll change it. But I don't think I have this in use already on my host, so it should be okay. Um, but we're just going to run this thing and let it go grab everything that it needs. So let's downloading this one. I'm not sure what this part of this actual uh, container is. So we go out to Docker Hub and check it out and find out. This may be an operating system container. It's pretty big. I mean, it's a, it's a half a gig. Um, you know, it's probably a server container of some kind. There may be a better server container that, that could get used and, and basically create a different uh, Docker image of this thing. But um, yeah, I mean, it's about a half gig just for that one on its own. So I think this whole thing all together is probably close to three fourths of a gig. So just be aware of that on the space uh, aspect of it. It's extracting that one now, and then it'll extract these last uh, few here in just a second, and it shouldn't take too long to get through that process. All right, it's all done, and it says that our image is up and running, so I'm just going to clear the terminal so it's easy for you to read here uh, anything else that we're going to be doing, which we do have to do another step. So if you keep reading down, he says, okay, so now you can start running this command here, um, which is an nmap command, and basically this is going to generate an XML file and put it in that folder that we just talked about. So I'm just going to copy that command. And I'm going to come back here, I'm going to use Control shift v to paste it in. And we're going to let that run. Um, if you don't have nmap installed, so I don't on this machine, 
right here, depending on your operating system, it should tell you how to install it. Um, so I'm just going to use a sudo apt install nmap, um, only because snap has some pretty weird rules around how it does that. This may do the snap whether I want it to or not anyways, but uh, I want it to install nmap. So we'll let it go grab nmap here real quick. And once that thing's installed, then we'll clear out the terminal again here, and we'll just go back up to that command and run it again. Now this is a fairly long running command, um, so I didn't do something that I should have. Let me do one more thing here. On this command, he just automatically assumes it's 192.168.1. My network is actually 192.168.7. Um, so make sure that you put in the correct uh, network address. So if you're using 10 dot something dot something, you make sure to change that. If you're using 172, you know, wh whatever you're using for your uh, LAN, make sure you put in the correct uh, address components. And if you're using a, a class B subnet where it's uh, actually dot zero dot zero slash 16, you know, make, make those appropriate changes so that it can go actually ping all of the different hosts and things on your network. Uh, mine is just a, a class C network with a slash 24 which means only this last octet is what's going to be different. Um, everything else will be 192.168.7. So uh, let me go ahead and hit enter. Again, this is a long running command, so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch it run. Um, I'll jump back into the recording once it's actually finished. But uh, yeah, go ahead and run this command, and then there's still one more step we need to do to access the web UI, but we'll have to wait till this command's finished, and then we'll come back and do that. All right, that scan's been running for about 23 minutes and it's still not quite done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the next step while we're waiting on that. So I'm gonna log back into, well, I'm gonna log in through a different terminal to my server. And we'll clear that out. We'll go back to the instructions here and there's one more thing. So if you wanna actually get into the uh, web UI, you need to get a token. So they tell you exactly here's the, Here's the command you need to run in order to do that. So uh, docker exec dash ti uh, webmap, which is the actual name of the container, slash root slash token. So it's basically saying, hey, go grab a token from, from this location out of this container, and you're going to do that through the actual terminal. So we'll just go back in here, and we will paste that in. Uh, oops, let's make sure we get the right one. We don't want to run the wrong command. There we go and there we go so it gives us a token and i can take that token now and control shift c to copy it and then we can go ahead and open up our browser and we can open up a new window while we're waiting and we'll go to our ip address and port 8000 and it's going to ask us for that token so we just paste that in there and this is what your kind of UI is going to look like initially. So you see it's got one XML file. It's showing zero for everything, though, because I think this is either the partial run that we're doing now or it's the run that I, that I did initially that it started creating the XML file from the wrong subnet. So we'll give this a few minutes still to finish up, and then we'll come back and check out what we find. And now we're going to go back to the interface here, and we're going to just refresh. And I just moved that, that XML file over to the folder where this looks, and now you can see shows that I've got 149 open ports, I've got seven that are actually being filtered, and then zero that are closed ports. So I've got a lot of open ports on my network. And if you wanna see detail, you can jump in here and just click on this link. And you get this nice uh, set of charts and you can see which ports are open, what things are problems, so, you know, so on and so forth. And then you can kind of go down here and you get some nice charts so that you can see, you know, what's the most common open port, which is what you'd expect, it's the HTTP port, uh, port 80. And as you move down, you can see SSH, which I use SSH all over my network, so that's expected. And you just kind of can keep going down through and see which ports are open. And this can help you go through and say, you know, why is this open? And ask some questions that would be good for network security and kind of figure out, does this need to be open? Or is it something that I missed, you know, when I was setting up my firewalls, things like that. And of course, this is all inside my network. This is not opened up on the outside of my network, but it lets me know what's going on on my network, which is really useful. So as you keep moving down, then you get into the system specific stuff. So this is my router and my gateway. We can move on down, we can see 7.24 and then 7.33, which is the machine that I'm on. And you can kind of get a mini report for each of these machines. And you can click in if you wanna see the actual specifics for that machine. So this machine has five ports that are open and I'm not filtering any ports. And you can kind of see what those ports are and what I'm, you know, why I have them open. So. Um, I do a lot of things off this machine. That's why they're set up. That's why it's set up that way. Um, but you can kind of do that all the way through this uh, different uh, interface, which is kind of great. 
So as you keep going down through here, you'll get through all your different uh, live systems that are on your network, and you can kind of see what's going on on all those different systems. So if we get down here to 125, this is the one where I run all of my Docker stuff. So when you scroll, you'll see there's a whole lot of stuff that's opened up because I'm running a ton of Docker uh, servers off of that actual machine. And if I go back, I've got one down here that's kind of interesting. Uh, let me get to it. And it's this one here, 214, which is a SIP phone that I use with Fusion PBX. And that's a, that's a video I'll do in the future. And so you can kind of click in and just check it out and see what it looks like. So this, this can even ping that SIP phone and get a little bit of information about it. It's got two ports open, which you'd expect because it is doing some SIP communication. It does have a web user interface in order to kind of set it up and configure it. So this is web map. It's a really cool user interface, front end for end map. So you still need end map and you still have to run that command. Now, if you want to update your end map information, occasionally you'd have to run that command again, but you could also make a script and then set it up in cron to run automatically every five hours, every six hours, every day, every week, whatever you want. And then you can just come in and refresh the interface and take a look and see what things look like and make sure there's not anything weird going on in your network. Um, it's not a network monitor per se, but it's a, it's a really nice little replacement and it's got a great user interface for looking at the in-map information. Now, the last thing that you can look at when you go back up here, so if we go into this, we can look at the network view. And this kind of gives you this nice jiggly looking thing. So this is kind of pretty cool. Um, if we go scrolling out, you can see all the different devices on my network and you can kind of scroll back in, just you know, put your mouse where you want to see something with focus. And it's pretty great. Now you can grab something and move it around as well in here. So you can kind of click and grab things and move them around and see what's going on. You know, just move them out a little ways. Now, my network's very simple. I've got a single router and gateway. It's a mesh system, but everything goes through that router and gateway. So that's why you see the central point with everything kind of coming out from there. But if you have a more complex network, you would, of course, see something a little bit more complex. And it, it, it can really show you what's going on as far as the network map and what's connected to what and, and how it's connected. So uh, another really cool view of things that is that's pretty nice to kind of be able to see. So as you click, you can kind of see, oh, hey, here's some, some things that are opened up on this particular machine. So I want to zoom out real quick, and I want to zoom in on that machine specifically. And you can drag this thing down by clicking and dragging. And you can see here I've got 445, I've got 22, I've got 4,000, and I've got uh, 139 open. So this 221, this is my, my machine out in my office that I use quite a bit, um, also a Linux machine. So I just picked on it because I knew it would have a few things that were interesting to look at. Um, I don't see the 125 just on the top of my head here in the list of stuff. But that would also be a really interesting one to kind of click on and take a look at just to see, you know, what's going on with that machine. Um, but there's just so much stuff going on on the network and you, you don't even realize how much stuff can happen on your network whenever you're looking at different information. So it's worthwhile to kind of check it out occasionally and see what's going on. And I think this is a really cool view. Um, this goes in line really well with a lot of the other uh, systems that I've shown you guys in the past to, to kind of check out and, and keep an eye on your network and see what's going on. Uh, from from that perspective, here's another machine that's on my network, um, 242. This is actually uh, my my pie hole, so you can just look here and see what's coming off of the pie hole. And again, you've got port 80, 22, and then 53, which is for D DNS, which is what you'd expect. It's got a web interface. You can SSH to it, and we have DNS. So I'd, I would expect these to be open. If I saw other ports open, that might give me pause to kind of say, wait a minute, what's going on with this machine? So it's a, it's just a really cool way to look at things and. I thought this was a great pick, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.